Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so last time we had finished with section 2.3, the tools, um, and we're supposed to go on with, with actually configuring Skyrim. However, just a couple things I want to clean up from the last video. I did make a couple of minor mistakes, maybe one that was not so minor. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's talk about this for a second. First of all, let's talk about the ENB manager. Let me pull up the... Uh, the NB manager. We did not finish installing this. All I did was extract the jar file. That is not the end of the installation process for ENB manager. It comes zipped and then you have to, to actually run this jar to, to install the file. Now, I'm pretty sure, guys, that I do not have Java installed on this computer. Uh, I don't like Java. Um, I find it to be a security risk, so I don't keep it on my computer. So if I hit, let's just check it out. If I hit open with, by default, it's going to try to use 7z file opener, which is absolutely not right. Uh, yeah, I don't have Java on here. So, okay, we'll have to install Java at least for the purposes of running that. So if you guys right click on this and hit open with, and if you have Java here, you're, you're good. But if not, we'll go get it. Okay, so here you go, guys. This is the Java page, java.com slash en download. It looks like the current version is version 8, update 66, which was just released in November. So let's go to the download page. Okay, I agree, and start downloading. So there we go, save the file. And let's go ahead and install. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, we'll just let it go to its default. It's probably the C drive. Oh, there it is. Um, okay, so now we're, <laughs> see, this is one of the reasons I hate this thing. So it wants to start changing your computer around. No, you may not update my browser settings. Um, I like my homepage the way it is. Thank you very much. Three billion devices run Java and three billion devices are vulnerable to attack. <laughs> Sorry guys, you probably know that I, I despise this program. Um, you can probably tell. But whatever, I'll let it run. And then I'm going to run this and take it right back off again. Okay, uh, you have successfully installed Java. Swell. Okay. So there you go, guys. Java's installed. Manager. Okay, so there you go. Um, it installed. So we are going to have to keep Java on this computer to run this because um, that's the run program as well as the installer. It's kind of a weird system. So you, if you just have the ENB manager jar, you got to double click on that, and it'll set up these. Uh, directories for you and then when you double click on it it should pull up the NB manager so there you go we're installed so that's what I wanted to fix for that all right guys so second thing I wanted to do was talk about wire bash so I'm gonna go back to my installation directory go to wire bash um, I made a minor mistake when I was doing this and uh, it probably doesn't matter to be honest um, but what I'm going to do here is just grab all these folders and I'm going to delete them out. I'm going to leave the, the directory wire bash in. What I did, and I'll just go to my downloads, which is here. So this is from the last session when we downloaded wire bash. You still have it in your download file um, if you made the same mistake that I did. Um, so we'll open, here, we'll just open it up. Oh, hate that thing. Okay, try a 7-zip. <laughs> Open archive. There we go. Okay, so what I had done last time was I actually went into this Mopey folder, and I, from here I, I extracted all this. I don't want to do that. Let's go... How do I go back? There we go. What I want to do is, is be out here at the kind of the parent directory, and then we'll extract that. And we'll do that into Wirebash. Now, does that make any difference? Probably not. 
The only real difference, really, guys, is it's going to be in Mopi, and now Mopi will have all this stuff. Okay, so I just missed a, a folder. I could actually really have just created this folder and moved everything into it, and it would have been fine. Um, now, we haven't run anything yet. There's no registry settings to worry about. Well, once we run it, then you might have a little harder time. But Okay, so those were the two mistakes that I wanted to fix, uh, so we should be good there. All right, so let's go on with where we were supposed to start off with. So we're going to start off with section three now. All journeys begin with the first step. So this is where we configure Skyrim. Yay, we're actually finally going to run the game. Okay, so start the Elder Scrolls Skyrim through the Steam context menu, menu to open the launcher. Okay. So what he's talking about, guys, is you can go into Steam and go to your library and go to Elder Scrolls, and I think this is what he wants you to push. That's the Steam context menu, right? I think. You can do that. I mean, that's fine. We also have the shortcut right on our desktop, which will do exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is the first time we're going to run the game. It's going to detect the video hardware, so let it do that. Uh, my, my particular settings have gone to ultra high quality. So, there you go. We actually are running the game. Woohoo! Let's see, back to the website. So what did you want us to do? See, this is where I need two screens. <laughs> Let's try to get this where I can see both things at the same time. Okay, it's kind of small, but okay. So click Options. Hit Ultra, which we already were at, but Set the aspect ratio and the resolution through the dot drawn box. This should be set to the monitor's optimal resolution. Okay, so if I look at my screen resolution right now, this is my main screen. I'm at 1920 by 1080. So 1920 by 1080 resolution, anti-aliasing or aspect ratio, 196 wide screen. That's what I have. So we're good there. Um, we're going to set the anti-aliasing level to off. Uh, set anti-as, any anisotropic filtering to off. I can never say that word. I should be able to say anisotropic. I'm supposed to be a game developer. I'm supposed to know what that means, but I do know what it means, but I just can't say it. All right. Um, the close. Close. There's no close. What are you talking about? Set anti off. Okay, I don't know what close he's talking about, but I'm going to hit OK. Okay. So next from the game to so the basic, the set of basic in-game options can be properly added to the INI files. Click play on launcher to start Skyrim. Um, this is going to go full screen. I'm going to lose this menu. Okay, guys, keep this up if you're following along. Um, I'm going to put this on my other screen so I can see it. So it's just going over here. And I'm going to hit play. And look at that, we're playing Skyrim. So the game's going to load. And there's the logo. Okay, so by default, this thing defaults to the controller. I have a controller, but I'm going to switch back to keyboard in a minute. Okay, so here we are at the load screen, guys. Let's hit the new button. And yes. Um, so we're going to start up a brand new game. Now, we're not going here to start up an actual new game. We, there's a few settings we gotta we got to get to as soon as we hit the options. Um, the menu. Now we can't do this until we get to the place where it says Skyrim. Because if I try to hit the escape key now, nothing happens. Oh, there it is. Elder Scrolls 5. As soon as that fades away, Skyrim fades away. Now we should be able to hit. Yeah, 
not yet. Maybe as soon as he starts talking. Ah, okay, yes, right, because we're still... Okay, thank you. We're still in the, uh, the controller, that's why I couldn't escape. That's the first thing I gotta fix. Alright, so we're gonna go down and go to settings. Uh, gameplay. First off, no 360 controllers, please. Um, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Let's turn that off, and I'm gonna save that out. So I'm gonna back off, back off, save that. So there you go, we've got our cursor back. And I can use the keyboard. Great. Okay, now we can go back to doing what he wants us to do. Okay, so we've hit play, we selected new game, we allow the Skyrim logo to fade away, and hit escape on the keyboard. Okay, so we're going to go to settings, and display. Um, let's see, was dialogue subtitles? Yes. General subtitles? Yes, we'll turn on the subtitles. Um, get out of here. Gameplay? Okay, we're gonna take out the um, the auto saves because according to him, apparently the auto saves are potential crash to desktop events. So we'll take these out. Save on character menu, and we'll just click here until it says disabled. Okay. There you go. We can escape out of there, let that save. So this is it, guys. You. This is the um, you This is the vanilla Skyrim, basically, guys. This is um Skyrim at its most basic. And probably its most stable. Alright, let's quit out of here. Okay guys, so we've We've just uh, done some basic Skyrim configurations. Let's configure the creation kit. So let's pull this. I'm going to pull this back over. So we've uh, let's go back to where we were. We configured Skyrim. We did all this stuff. Okay. Now we're going to. Okay. So we set up the IIF files with a high resolution baseline, high performance. I don't know about high performance. High resolution is really what you should say, uh, because he went to ultra. Enable the subtitles and disabled autosaves as they're generally not safe and may cause additional crash to desktops. Manual saves are highly recommended on a periodic basis. All right, it's very good. Let's configure the creation kit. So again, leave this up, guys. I'm going to drag this over across the other screen, and we will start up the creation kit. Okay, again, now you can, you can do this through Steam, like right in here if you need to. Go to Tools and Skyrim Creation Kit and just right click and hit uh, play game okay you can do that uh, we set up a desktop icon for it so I'm just gonna start that up hit yes there we go okay so all you want to do is start it up and the reason we're doing this is to set up the configuration files so once it's running close it back down again and then we'll go over to where we installed it Skyrim editor INI Skyrim editor There it is. That's what we want. Okay. So here's our Skyrim editor configuration. So we're going to go to the bottom of the general section. Okay, before I do that, I'm going to hit Control F and I'm going to see if we have this already in here. B, allow, oh, my caps lock seems to be on. B, allow, uh, multiple master loads. Nope doesn't exist okay good so at the bottom of this general section which is what this first one is we're gonna go B allow multiple master loads equals one okay very good let's buzz down a little bit oh, this is long okay let's just hit control F and find s archive list there it is. Okay, S archive list equals. Let's make sure we get this right. After update BSA add comma 
Dawn Guard. BSA. BSA. Comma. Earth Fires BSA. Make sure we spell all this right. And Dragonborn dot BSA. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to copy that because we're going to need it again. There should be an S resource archive list. Two. Right here. Um, after update BSA. Add that stuff that we just put in, like such. Let's make sure we spell this right. Dawn Guard, Earth Fires, Dragonborn. Looks good. All right. So we'll save that and close that. Very nice. We're going to go to the Skyrim data folder. And we're going to open up scripts.rar. Pop that open. And we're going to extract all these files. Just like that. Okay, guys, we're done. They stopped putting the scripts rar into the data files directly. So we just pulled them out. So now dialog views and scripts are now directly into the folder. So we just pulled them out of this, this archive. Okay, that's all we've done there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, do a fix for the Papyrus compiler, because uh, we have a 64-bit system. If you don't have a 64-bit system, you don't have to do this. But um, if you do have a 64-bit system, then you gotta you got to fix it, cause, because uh, Mod Organizer can't can't deal with 64-bit uh, applications. So let me pull this over here, guys. OK, uh, let's back back up to where we were. Yes, the creation bit. OK, so this is what I'm talking about. So the following fixes required only for users with 64-bit operating system. Compiling Papyrus scripts in the creation kit will fail. Fortunately, there's a workaround to force the compiler to always run in 32-bit mode. Download this tool and place it in the Skyrim Papyrus compiler folder. All right, let's go check out whatever tool he's talking about. There it is. So let's go ahead and download it. Save that. We want to paste it in the Skyrim Papyrus compiler folder. Okay, let's close 7 zip. Let's close Steam. I don't need Steam up right now. Um, so let's go to our download folder. Let's see. Oh, I don't want to run it. <laughs> Stop doing that. There we go. OK, we want to place this in the Skyrim. So we're going to the E drive, Skyrim, Steam library, Steam apps, common Skyrim Papyrus compiler, right? Place in this Papyrus compiler. So there, this, this. I'm drag you down into here. Now we can run it. And hit start. There you go. So that should fix the problem with 64-bit systems. We should be done there. Okay.